Hey guys, it's Adam Levitan and I am here at the Fantasy Labs homepage because it is US Open week. Lot of action on DraftKings this week. Millie Maker, obviously, a bunch of other really big tournaments expecting to get more cash action than usual because everybody is excited about the US Open. One thing I've been thinking about lately with golf and with these large field GPPs is a way to kind of forget about the players and forget about the stats and forget about the data for a minute and just concentrate on ownership and finding ways to be profitable just using ownership, finding ways to have really good expected value, really leverage really hard with ownership. And I think we can do that in golf because it's such a volatile sport. I mean, even more so than NFL, like the 50th best golfer in the world compared to Dustin Johnson is not that wide of a margin, certainly not nearly as wide as, you know, the 50th best running back in a given week versus the number one running back versus David Johnson or, or whatever. Um, and, you know, the bottom line is with golf, we don't know as much as we think we know. And that's that, that doesn't mean uh, you guys or me or us or, or whatever, it just means that generally speaking, we don't just, we just can't predict golf as well as we think we can. And I mean, just look at the last you know, a few weeks with golf. You go to the ownership page here at Labs and see, you know, last week, uh, Berger was 18% in the 3-3-3. Not very high. Uh, the week before, Duffner in the um, 4-4-4 was 2.97%. Obviously, we're ignoring the weekend tournaments here. 2.97% in the big 4-4-4. Let's go back the week before. I believe it was Kevin Kisner who won. And Kevin Kisner was 17%, not overwhelming. Um, you know, we can keep going back. We can go all the way back, certainly to Billy Horschel, who was very low owned, you know, 3% in the $4, 5% in the 36 5% in the 333 And then the last kind of major we saw, or the fifth major, was when Si Wu came out of nowhere to win 0.17% in the 444, same as the $4. You know, and I, like, just look at here. Like, this was two weeks ago, I believe. Uh, Johnson, uh, that's not it. That's not the one I am looking for. I am looking for here, I believe. Whoops, got my months confused. Uh, here, when Dustin and Rom were the two highest priced golfers, were the two highest owned golfers, and they didn't make the cut, scored 15 and 18.5 DK points. So kind of the point here is that we just don't know as much as we think we know, so that's why using or finding low owned golfers uh, makes so much sense. And I think one way we can capitalize on that is by looking at guys who have struggled lately but are still actually good. So let's go to our trends tool here on Fantasy Labs and we're gonna go ahead and create a new trend. We'll say uh, duds lately, we'll call, we'll call this. And the first thing we're going to do is we're gonna look at some duds. So we are going to go to Fantasy Month month duds and this is the percentage of games in which a player is one half of a standard deviation below his salary based expected output in other words how often has he played poorly relative to his salary over the last month we'll set that at somewhere between 50 to 100 percent of the time all right and now let's make sure that these players that we're looking at are actually good so we'll look at long-term adjusted round score uh, let's actually just look at long-term adjusted round, the raw number here. And let's make sure they're good. Let's make sure their long-term adjusted round score is at least 70. All right, so now we have positive expectation here. Positive 1.70. Not bad. Obviously, we have a lot of current matches for this week at the U.S. Open. One way we can kind of figure out more if players are good is pro trends. And I think pro trends is something that Perhaps people aren't using enough or people aren't putting enough weight on. I mean, I've done um, videos before where I showed how effective pro trends are. I think it was for NBA. But, you know, pro trends are basically just stats that we have found at Fantasy Labs to historically perform really well uh, over a very large sample. And the more a player has of those, the more positive their expectation is 
typically. So if we give them, let's say, at least five protrends. All right, so now we have a pretty positive trend here. We have a count of 378, which is solid. We have a plus minus of 4.45, which is very good in golf. 60% consistency and 12.7% ownership we'll see some of the past results here guys you know just last week rcb rafael cabrera bella fell into this at the saint jude uh ended up with a really good result i believe he finished fourth at 12 or 11 percent ownership in most tournaments um so you know we can scroll back here and see kind of the results current matches for this week's u.s open with this trend rcb again he has had a couple duds here uh the miscut here miscut at the heritage DJ, you know, DJ had the miscut. I already talked about it at Memorial, but even when he gets 13th and 12th, you know, that's kind of a poor result for him when you cost 12 5, 78 points is just not enough. Ricky Fowler, I think he'll be somewhat lightly owned off of last week's miscut when he came in as kind of the favorite. And the chalk at 12K missed the cut. He's interesting as somebody who we know is good, who's coming off bad performance. Lucas Glover, miscut here, but at a sixth, you know, below expectation here, 45th. Martin Keimer, I think, is interesting, too. Um, miscut in his last event, the BMW PGA. But has played well uh, in big tournaments before. Master 16th this year and disappointing 69th at the players when he was chalk. So I think a lot of people are going to be off him. And then the one that I think is kind of the most interesting is, is John Rom, the Rom Goat. Miscut at Memorial, MDF'd uh, on Saturday at the players. Really disappointed a lot of people. But, man, this dude is is so, so, so good and... And this is a course at Aaron Hills that nobody has played before, so he won't be at a disadvantage being that he's never played the course, which is a lot of the case uh, where he's played at as kind of a rookie on the PGA Tour. So expect kind of, I don't expect low ownership on Dustin, obviously. I don't expect low ownership on Rom, but I think some of these other guys will be kind of lower than we expect. Um, not Certainly not 1%, except maybe Lucas Glover, but, you know, guys in kind of the 5, 8, 10%. I think there's a lot of value there. And just generally thinking about things and playing around with trends to help us identify low-owned golfers that are actually good uh, is a way to go. And guys playing poorly recently is one way to look at that. Any questions on this, don't hesitate to email me, ajl201 at yahoo.com. Good luck at the U.S. Open. Hope one of you guys takes down the Millie Maker. For Jerry, I am Adam. Good luck, everybody.